Hello and welcome to day 14 of the Mindfulness Challenge. We've made it. Not only have we made it to day 14, um, we're still going, we're still working, we're still... And this is the first day really I'm out and about. So I'm just out towards the coastline, not far from where I live. Um, just thought I'd change up the energy a little bit really because most of them have all been sat down in the office and, and those things, etc. And today we're going to do... Um, we're going to do a mountain meditation, which will be on in a few moments' time. Um, but before that, I just want to just talk about, you know, mindfulness and where we are and, and how things are going, etc., etc. And I was watching an Eckhart Toll video the other day, and he was talking about spiritual awakening and when does the spiritual awakening happen. And it's really when we start to come off the the normal treadmill where we just sort of float along and everything's abundant and everything's going forward and everything's okay. We don't really ask any questions of ourselves. We don't ask any questions of our inner selves or where we are and where we're going. It's only on times now where, we, where we're reflecting and we're questioning things, you know, is when we can really have an amplification of that awakening. And that awakening really is, is, is about us just thinking about ourselves, thinking about how we treat ourselves, thinking about how we are with ourselves, and, and this time now when we've got some, some time on our hands um, to be able to do that type of thinking is, is, is hugely important. And, you know, it's a very short one today. And the reason for that is, is I just want you to spend some time with yourself, not with me. And spend some time with yourself thinking about, you know, being kind to yourself. Not beating yourself up, not setting so many expectations, you know, and just being loving to yourself. And remember that you are the constant, that your human physical body is here every single day. We're not our thoughts. Our thoughts are real, but they're not true. Our emotions, you know, they are what they are. And we can live this happy, balanced, spiritual life with clarity and purpose and be healthy and kind to ourselves. So my tip to you, your part of mindfulness today is if you can, okay, and we are allowed one walk a day, is to go out and just be very mindful go for a mindful walk so as you're walking slow down push your awareness and your alertness out listen to the birds listen to the listen to the the, the sea listen now you know my dog in the background He's going nuts for uh, for stones again. So just listen and just be and enjoy these moments. Appreciate them. Listen to the birds. So it's a short one today. So when you, uh, I'm going to put the pop up the mountain meditation now for you to do. It's a consistent, and then I'll speak to you a little bit later on back in my office. But I wanted to get out and about today just to raise the energy and, and show something a bit different. Be love and give love, guys. Thanks very much. See you later. Bye-bye. Okay, so this mountain meditation is normally done in a, in a sitting position, either on the floor or a chair. But if you want to lay down, you can. And it begins by, if we can sit down now and get into that position, and it begins by us sensing into the support you have from the chair or the cushion or the mattress where you're laying down. And paying attention to the actual sensations of contact. Finding a position of stability and poise, upper body balance over your hips and shoulders in a very comfortable, comfortable but alert position. You can put your hands on your lap or your knees and the arms can be hanging there now by their own weight. Stable and relaxed. And actually, you're sensing your body, feeling your feet, your legs, your hips, your lower and upper body, arms, shoulders, neck and head. You bring an awareness to your breath, the actual physical sensations, feeling each breath as it comes in 
and as it goes out. Letting the breath just be, just as it is, without trying to change or regulate it in any way. Allowing it to flow easily and naturally with its own rhythm and pace. Knowing that you're breathing perfectly well right now. Nothing for you to do whatsoever. Allowing the body to be still and sitting with a sense of dignity or laying. A sense of resolve. A sense of being complete. Whole in this very moment. With your posture reflecting this sense of wholeness. As you sit here, letting an image form in your mind's eye. Or as we say with spirituality, your third eye. In between your eyes, your eyebrows. And I want you to envisage the most magnificent or beautiful mountain you have ever seen or could imagine. And letting it gradually come into greater focus. And even if it doesn't come as a visual image, allowing the sense of this mountain and feeling its overall shape. Its lofty peak or peaks high in the sky, the large base rooted in the bedrock of the earth's crust. Its steep or gently sloping sides. Noticing how massive it is, how big it is, how solid, how unmoving, how beautiful whether from afar or up close. Perhaps your mountain has a snow blanketing on the top and trees reaching down to the base or rugged granite sides. There may be streams and waterfalls cascading down the slopes. There may be one peak or a series of peaks or meadows with high lakes. Observing it, noting its qualities. And when you feel ready, seeing if you can bring the mountain into your own body sitting here, so that your body and your mountain and your mind's eye become one. So that you can sit here together. You can share in the sheer size and the stillness and the majestic of the mountain. You become the mountain. Grounded in the sitting posture, your head becomes the lofty peak, supported by the rest of your body and affording a beautiful panoramic view. Your shoulders and arms, the sides of the mountain your buttocks and legs the solid base, rooted to your cushion of your chair or your mattress. Experience in your body a sense of upliftment from the deep within your pelvis and spine. With each breath as you continue sitting, becoming a little more a breathing mountain, alive and vital, yet unwavering in, in inner stillness. Completely what you are, beyond words, and thought, a centered, grounded, and moving presence. As you sit here, becoming aware of the fact that the sun travels across the sky, the light and the shadows and colors are changing virtually moment by moment in the mountain stillness, and the surface teems with life and activity. Streams, melting snow, waterfall, plants and wildlife. As the mountain sits seeing and feeling how night follows day and day follows night. The bright warming sun followed by the cool night sky studded with stars. And the gradual dawning of a new day. Through it all the mountain just sits experiencing change in each moment constantly changing, yet always just being self. It remains still as the seasons flow into one another and the weather changes moment by moment and day by day. 
calmness abiding all change. In the summer there is no snow on the mountain except perhaps for the very peaks or in the crag shield in front of the direct sunlight. In the autumn the mountain may wear a coat of brilliant fire colours. In the winter a blanket of snow and ice. In any season it may find itself at times shrouded in clouds or fog or pelted by freezing rain. People may come to see the mountain and comment how beautiful it is. None of this really matters to the mountain. It remains at all times its essential self. Clouds may come and clouds may go. Tourists may like it or not. The mountain's magnificent magnificence and beauty are not changed one bit by whether people see it or not, seen or unseen, in sun or clouds, broiling or frigid, day or night. It just sits being itself. At times visited by violent storms, buffeted by snow and rain, and winds of unthinkable magnitude. Through it all, the mountain sits. Spring comes, trees leaf out, flowers bloom in the high meadows and slopes, birds sing in the trees once again. Streams overflow with the waters of the melting snow. But through it all, the mountain continues to sit and moved by weather, by what happens on its surface, by the world of appearances, remaining its essential true self. Through the seasons, the change in weather, the activity ebbing and flowing on its surface. In the same way as we sit in meditations, we can learn to experience the mountain. We can embody the same central unwavering stillness and groundlessness. In the face of everything that changes in our lives, over seconds, over hours, over years. In our lives and in our meditation practice, we can experience constantly changing nature of mind and body in the outer world. We have our own periods of light and darkness, activity and inactivity, our moments of colour and our moments of drabness. It's true that we experience storms of varying intensity and violence in the outer world, in our own minds and bodies, buffeted by high winds, by cold and rain, we endure, endure periods of darkness and pain, as well as moments of joy and upliftment. Even our appearance consistently changes, experience a weather in and of its own. But by coming, becoming the mountain in our meditation practice, we can link up with its strength and stability, and adopt this for our very own. We can use its energies to support our energy, to encounter each moment with mindfulness, with compassion, with empathy and clarity. It may help us to see our thoughts and feelings, our preoccupations, our emotional storms and crises, even the things that happen to us at very much like the weather or the mountain. We tend to take it personally but its strongest characteristic is impersonal. The weather of our own lives is not ignored or denied. It is also to be encountered, honoured, felt, known for what it is, but held in awareness and in holding in its way, we come to a deeper silence and stillness with wisdom. We hold it and our experiences with compassion, with empathy and with loving kindness. Mountains have this to teach us more, and we just need to let it in. So if you find you resonate in some way with the strength and stability of the mountain in your sitting, it may be helpful to use it from time to time in your meditation practice, to remind you of what it means to sit mindfully, with resolve, with wakefulness, in true stillness. So in the moments that now remain, Continue to sustain the mountain meditation in your own silence, moment by moment, until you hear the sound of the bell.
So that was the mountain meditation. I'm back inside now, a bit windswept, but uh, trying to get on and get, get everything done. Um, day 14, well done, congratulations. I hope um, you are um, f starting to feel the benefits of the cultivation of the mindfulness that we've been doing and starting just to understand things. You know, I, I said earlier that, um, you know, our spiritual awakening when we're, when we're working on these things really is about, you know, um, it's questioning things when things aren't going right and, and when we're sat down doing things when they're not going right and all of a sudden we start to question these things. And, and for me, you know, we've, for, so, for so long society has, has been heading in a very selfish and greedy direction fueled by you know, constant need for perfection. We set in ourselves some impossible standards and, and for our loved ones as well. And we become deeply disappointed when we don't meet those standards. We push ourselves, we push our children, we push everything. We live in an age where instant gratification and everything you need is, you know, and the bar's too high. And if we don't jump over that bar, then everything underneath is a waste of time. So today is an opportunity for us to recalibrate, the word I'm using a lot, is to refocus, start to make some plans for what's going to happen when all this is finished, but good plans, positive plans, how you're going to transform your life and move things forward and take little bits of steps. You know, I say that Rome wasn't built in a day, but some of it was, and, and let's start that today. So I'm hoping and praying, as I said before, that the numbers of this coronavirus who pass, you know, are minimal, but the impact of change is monumental. I, it might hope that when everything gets back to normal, we think twice before we go back into making the same mistakes. We think twice about getting back on the treadmill. We think twice about pressing play on Groundhog Day. We ha One of the big things here is we wanna be able to hold our inner connections, our exterior connections. When this is all over, and I certainly hope it's all over sooner rather than later, and our lives get back to normal, the one thing that matters is how we treated ourselves and how we treated each other. Thank you for watching day 14. There will be day 15. I'll do it tomorrow. Put your hand on your chest and say, thank you very much. My wife just brought my dinner in. Thank you very much. And um, good morning, Julian. And I love you. Good morning, Julian. And I love you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for my lunch, Denise. I really do appreciate it. This is real. I'm authentic. I try and do things the right way around. God bless you. Be love and give love. And I'll see you tomorrow. And start making some real positive changes and plans and how you're going to, you know, be the person that we know you can be. Success is being as good as you can be. Not as Kim Kardashian or, or whoever it is. Be yourself. It's amazing. Love yourself. Fantastic. Day 14. I'm back. Goodbye. Yeah. End of my lunch. <laughs>